I'm your host, Jill McPherson. We are here today to talk about sex. Many people struggle with unsatisfying or non-existent sex lives, particularly in long-term relationships. If you can relate to this, then you'll definitely want to tune in to today's show. My guest today is on a mission to help individuals and couples remove the barriers that are keeping them from experiencing a fulfilling sex life. Her name is Freya Norden. She is a somatic sex educator and erotic hypnotist. I am so glad you could join me in the studio today to discuss an issue that affects many of us. Welcome. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. So let's just start off with how did you become a somatic sex educator? Well, um, going back to the very beginning, I was a massage therapist and um, I found, you know, my clients were telling me all of the intimate details of their personal lives on the table, just a sort of a sharing and, and wanting some opinions. And um, because my personal interest in sexuality, which I've always had, um, even from a very young age, I had already been researching and exploring um, just sort of tantric education and different things that I could do to improve my own life and um, you know my, my life with my partner, my then husband, because I got married as a teenager, so I was already married uh, wow. by the time I was a massage therapist. And I started to give them advice and say, well, maybe try this you know, go home and try that. So um, that got me thinking that I would like to use the hands-on healing work in conjunction with teaching people about sexuality. And that was where it began. Right. And from there, um, I realized the mind is the biggest tool. So, so the body is where we feel things and experience things, but the mind is in control of what the body experiences a right. lot of times. Sure. And I wanted something that could really change the mind effectively and quickly, and that was where hypnosis came into play. So I started to learn and um, develop that way as well and bring that into my practice. So you've got a combination of three things going there, with the talking, the hands-on, and... Hypnosis and energy work. And energy work. Yeah, because you can't, um, you can't discount the energy in it. It's all about erotic energy. Okay. So if somebody comes in to see you, um, how do you know sort of which approach, like are you using all of those approaches at the same time? Mm -hmm. And well, like how, where do you begin? So I begin, uh, sometimes people will ask me online, like everything is fielded online. So people will say, I have this problem, what can you do for me? Mm -hmm. And then I'll, I'll direct them in a certain way and other times they'll book a specific appointment. Like I get a lot of um, distance consults because people want to talk to me and see if I really if they, they like how my energy, yeah. if they like how I am, if I seem like I know what I'm talking about. Right. So we'll have a quick chat or we'll have like an hour long consultation because sometimes I don't need to really do that much for them. I right. can just give them some information and they can go from there. Um, otherwise they'll book, like um, they'll actually book a body work session, which inherently includes hypnosis or trance in it as well and energy work and teaching people to feel the subtle energies in their body and then consciously control them and move them. And if it's with couples, um, teaching them how to translate what they're feeling into words for their partner. Right. Which is one of the most important things and I believe what we're touching on today is, is bringing, in, yeah, bringing in the communication and the translating what's going on in the body to um, something that the other person can really understand and work with. Right, so when removing barriers to having a satisfying sex life, um, you right away have identified that communication is a big part of it. You know, and, and I think that's, you know, for me personally, my take on this, there's just such a, a myth out there, maybe, you know, thanks to Hollywood, that, you know, this intimate interaction is supposed to just happen and nobody talks during, you know, a, an intimate session on, you know, in a, a movie in, the, in Hollywood. So. But yet, it's so essential, isn't it, mm -hmm. to have that ongoing communication throughout a sexual interaction? If we're lucky, when we first meet somebody and have some sort of passionate feelings for them, we'll have a good experience sexually. But um, you can't expect ongoing good sex in a long-term relationship to last without really good communication. Right. Um, the fluctuating, like the changes in the hormones and the neurotransmitters, the changes in desire, the changes in what you even want because people get bored. That's mm -hmm. just a fact of life. Uh, you're, it's not going to be like this forever. When it's, even when it's really good in the beginning and it seems like, oh, our bodies are perfect. We just fit together and everything is so good. That changes. 
mm. and um, real life comes into play. I was going to say, life happens. Life happens. Have babies, whatever. You well, know. your energy is diverted as well. In the beginning, um, everything is focused on each other, and that's not maintainable. Mm. It's a drug-like high that happens in your brain and your body, and when you have a high, that high, you can't sustain it. So you need to be okay with it going down, and then intentionally build more highs and then come down, more highs and then come down. But people panic when... On the come down part. On the come down part. They're like, what's wrong? They panic on the come down and they don't know how to recreate highs because they're, it happened automatically when mm. they first met. Right, that's they didn't have to yeah. work at it. There's no work involved. It was just the chemistry yeah. of the newness, And that's nature's the way to make us, you know, that's have right. babies. Right, right. That's, you were designed to procreate. So um, if we want to stay together, and keep on enjoying sex with the same partner, you got to learn some skills on how to do conscious cultivation of the sexual energy. And um, a big part of that is kind of knowing what's going on in your own body and taking responsibility for your desires and what you're feeling and what you want and going after it with really specific steps. Right. So, it, so it's definitely more than just giving them, you know, the, the list of to-dos or not to-dos or, you know, just talking to them through. I, I know from my own personal experience, <laughs> you know, I was saying to you earlier, I mean, there's, if at one point a counselor was offering the whole, like, have a bubble bath and, you know, go for dinner and have a bubble bath. And I thought, if somebody tells me to have a, a bath or do, you know, light candles one more time, I'm going to throw something because that wasn't the key to removing the barrier mm -hmm. to having, a, you know, great sexual experiences. So it's, this isn't about just giving them like a how-to list or a to-do list. Not at this all. Tell me more, a bit more okay. about what you. Well, the premise behind that is because in order to be sexually receptive, um, and I'm not talking about with a new partner when the excitement and the hormones are, are crazy high. I'm talking about just in general. Long term. To be sexually receptive, you have to be relaxed enough to take the touch and perceive the touch as something that's erotic. And one of the keys to that is being relaxed. So if you're not relaxed, if you're stressed out and you're tense and somebody touches you, it's not erotic. Right. And with women, we're thinking about a million things. Mm. When men want sex, they kind of get one track. Right. They don't care about other stuff. They're not thinking about those other things, except the anxiety guys who get erectile dysfunction. They are. But generally, they've got one track and they have no problem focusing. We think about everything under the sun mm -hmm. except <laughs> what's happening with our own bodies. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so what's behind those suggestions to take a bubble bath and go out for dinner is, you know, it's well-intentioned, but it's not actually that effective usually. You have to go a little bit deeper. Right, because there's more. Yeah, there is more. It's just like all of those um, magazines that tell you all these tips and tricks to make it really hot. They're basically trying to get you to trick your mind into thinking that your partner is a new partner. Mm. Right. And, you know, dressing up and role playing something different, it, you know, tr you're pretending you're in a new situation. Right. So kind of getting that uncertainty, that fear, that sort of like, oh, okay, what's going to happen now? And it brings a little bit more excitement. Right. And stay tuned so that you'll find out what's going to happen next. <laughs> Today we are talking about something I'm very passionate about, helping people create an amazing sex life. My guest Freya Norden has spent the last 13 years providing effective solutions to individuals and couples who are looking to better their sex life. I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> Thank you, I'm glad to be here. What a great topic. Um, so what I want to focus in on is give me an example of you know an individual couple coming in to see you. What's sort of a common thing that you see happening with, with clients coming in to see you? Okay, so a very typical, um, let's say, couple coming in would be the female saying, you know, I don't like sex. I'm not having orgasms. Um, sometimes they'll have orgasms on their own uh, with vibrators. They won't be having them with their husbands. Um, and they'll be quite angry <laughs> at this uh, because they've put up with it long enough. And um, they're tired of his bad sexual behavior and they want it to change. Okay. And, and what's he saying? He's saying, tell us what to do. <laughs> they, um, in, generally, in general, men want their women to be happy sexually. Right, right. So, and they're feeling kind of lost. 
oh, very lost. Yeah, they don't know what to do. Okay. And um, so you've got an, an angry woman and a lost husband. Or, yes. You know. Yes. Yeah. So what do you do? Um, I talk to them separately because okay. I want to get both stories. Uh, I'll talk to the woman first, and I'll get her entire perspective and um, some of her history and what the experiences are like, as well as the marital sexual history, because some people had great sex in the beginning and then um, it dwindled or changed, and other people um, didn't have good sex to begin with. And often the man doesn't know about this. Mm. So he it was often under the misconception that they were having amazing, passionate sex, and um, the passion was there, but the sex wasn't good. So those are two separate things. And he doesn't know that. He doesn't know. Fascinating. A lot of times it? he doesn't know. Now that's an example of poor yep. communication right there. Yeah, very much so. Um, I, in, in these situations, they're very, very bad at communicating, sexually right. speaking. And usually the only part of the communication is the woman um, finally saying, you know, to all her friends. Mm. And to me, this sucks. Yeah. I want to change it. I don't like it. I don't like sex with him. It's making me unattracted to him. I'm disgusted by him now after all these years of not enjoying it. Um, and meanwhile, yeah. he couldn't do anything about it because he didn't he know. He didn't know. He didn't know. Sometimes the woman will be vocal about complaining and saying she doesn't like it, but she hasn't been able to get to the part of telling him what he needs to do so that she can like it. Right. And why not? Why aren't women speaking up and saying, this is what I need? So the, I'm going to answer the question, but I, this is one thing also that kind of thwarts the process is that why question. Um, because we, we grew up being conditioned not to express our needs. And if we did, we were punished in some way. We were called demanding, we were told no, or we were shamed, especially c with sexuality. Okay. Um, you know, think of children, a child expressing a sexual need. And, and children, um, you know, what are their needs? Privacy. Right. To be told maybe, um, you know, don't do that in the living room. Right. That's something that you can do in, in bed by yourself, um, not around other people. Um, but usually any type but of... But a lot of yeah. kids don't get that experience. No. They get a lot of shaming around yeah. any sort of self-discovery, self-pleasure. Yeah. Right. So we grow up... Um, Just all sort of shutting that part down? Shutting the communication part down anyway. Right. All communication, not just um, sexual communication. But with sexuality, there's a lot of fear surrounding expressing our needs because we're afraid of disrupting the security of the relationship. And when I say we, I'm referring to women in general. Okay. Not, you know, me personally, but even though, yeah, me personally too, um, even me. Yeah. Uh, it's experience. difficult to say certain things when you think that these things may disrupt the security of the relationship if you want your relationship to stay. Right. And um, expressing dissatisfaction is perceived as a threat to it. Right. Depending on what So don't the rock desires. the boat. Yeah, yeah. What does he want, you know, to keep him happy so that he'll like me? rather than expressing time. what I want. Well, there's a huge cultural thing as well where, you know, our purpose is to be attractive, mm. sexually attractive to the males of the world. So m much of our decisions are based not on what we want or our comfort or our desires, but what will make us appealing. So a woman complaining is not appealing. No. A woman having demands or needs or, um, you know, rules, that's not appealing. It's not sexy. Right. A woman being like, yeah, this isn't working for me. That's not sexy. No. If you want to keep the guy, you respond, even if the response is fake. You act like he's sexy. You act like what he's doing is, is good. Great. And, yeah. um, you know, in a lot of cases it works. Right. Because what men really want is, is to be desired as well. And to be, and to be, um, right, and then it gets that yeah. vicious cycle of reinforcement. It's a vicious of cycle. Not saying anything, letting on, it's great. And then after 20 years, it's uh, And then all of a sudden, devastating. she's like, I can't take yeah. this anymore, and she's going to lose it. Well, in the much older clients, um, that's one of the biggest reasons for the absence of sex. So finally, a woman will hit an age where she's like, I'm just not putting up with this anymore. You know, I'm too old for this shit. I'm not going to wear high heels. <laughs> I'm not going to have sex because the sex sucks. It hurts and I'm not getting anything out of it. Meanwhile, if she had communicated in a way um, that the man could hear, she could enjoy lots of intimacy in a way that she would enjoy and that worked for her body. Because, you know, he doesn't want to be 
just a penis either. Right. He wants he wants the whole dynamic interaction and to feel that deeper connection and to see the response of, of the woman. So how do you help women get this turned around? Uh, it's a multi-step process, especially in this kind of case. Um, and she has to realize what she's doing to facilitate the situation, right. which is a really bitter pill to swallow. What am I doing yeah. to create this situation where I'm having bad sex? So taking responsibility, not blame, yeah. because she didn't know what she was doing. Because having until that now, it's all been that terrible man Right. Blaming All he cares about is this, you know, he doesn't know about me, he, this, he doesn't do this, he doesn't do that. Um, so instead it's reflecting, okay, so what is it that I actually want? What are the experiences, the sexual experiences I want to have? And how do I get them? Right. So turning it from an emotional situation, the emotions being, you know, frustration. Um, I'm a victim. Oh, feeling like a victim, feeling violated, uh, right. which is very disempowering. Right. Um, if you if you think of something, oh well, I didn't speak up with what I wanted, so I didn't really have a good time. Versus, I felt violated. He just used my body for his ejaculation. Mm. Like one is disgusting and, and horrible feeling, and the other one is like, oh, you know, next time I'm gonna have to speak up because that wasn't that great. Right. Or, you know, I wasn't really in the mood, but I had sex because um, he certainly was. And I love him, and mm -hmm. I and you know it meant a lot to me to um, give love because men do experience like that's their way of expressing their love, right? And feeling it, so it's okay to engage as long as you're not feeling victimized, right? By it. So basically, you're dealing with you know mentally first and foremost of like yes. offering them a new perception on how to take charge of Shifting the situation. Shifting the perspective from one where they're powerless and where their pleasure is in the hands of somebody else to having a firm desire that they recognize and then taking actual steps to get that. Great. Desire and self-empowerment. Now that's, that, that's music to my ears. Stay tuned and we'll be back with more Sex Talk with my guest. Welcome back to Awakening Within. Our discussion today is about taking sexual responsibility. I'm here with Freya Norden, a somatic sex educator and erotic hypnotist. And let's just pick up where we left off for the break. That All was right. great. Yeah. So you first help women to decide or to acknowledge that they need to take sexual responsibility and not be a victim to their partner. Right. Okay. Yeah. So when they get into that headspace, because you really can't go any further until they do. Correct. I'm assuming. Yes. So they get okay. You've planted the seed, I'll take responsibility. Now how do you help them from there? So when they're ready, okay. uh, a lot of them don't actually know what it is that they want. They, uh -huh. have, a, they have a concept in their heads, mm -hmm. um, usually from books, um, you know, sexy books or Hollywood. And um, that concept is not reality. Like we have physical bodies and our physical bodies don't respond the same way that we do mentally. Okay. So understanding, you know, there's different types of arousal they want to have phenomenal sexual experiences, but they're not even in their bodies. They don't know how to, their bodies don't know how to feel pleasure. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to respond when somebody's touching them. And they don't know how to help guide that touch into something that's maybe more erotic for them. Right. I just really want to stress that they're not in their bodies. I mean, some people say, what does that mean? But really, you know, so many women, we're just functioning from the neck up, aren't we? Mm -hmm. We're so disconnected. There is an awareness of what's actually happening inside the body. Right. And the attention and the focus is up here. Right. Or out there or on thoughts, patterns of thoughts and cycles of thought. And when you have your focus on there, um, you're not in your body. Right. And your body isn't going to respond. Right. So, so no wonder yeah. the body's not responding in this in sexual interactions with their partner because they're sort of so disconnected anyway. It's a skill to learn how to focus, and most of us are really good at focusing on something. If you're an artist, you're good at focusing on your art. If you do yoga, you know you can get into that space during yeah. yoga. Um, or if you're really good at your job, right. you can focus at your job. But we don't focus on sex. 
Right. At least women don't often. So focus your on invitation that. is to get them to come down into their body, experience, mm -hmm. and be in their yeah. body. And um, to make that, have that not just happen with me, because you know we can make magic happen in the studio, but I want them to take it home and make it a practice. So if they think of their sexuality not as this thing that happens to them, but their sexuality is a lifelong practice that ebbs and flows and changes and meanders. Right. And they can deliberately course it if they're bored with it or if they want to try something new or they want to spice it up or if their life is busy and they want to put their energy on something else, um, that's okay. They can come back to their sexual practice anytime they want. Right. I love that. A yeah. sexual practice. Just like we have a practice, you know, maybe about going to the gym or we have a, exactly. you know, a practice exactly. of going to yoga. Um, having a sexual practice. And there's no panic there. Knowing that it's a practice that you can come back to and that you actually have tools to change it and alter it and cultivate it intentionally is really reassuring. Because again, you're not powerless to, to life. So how are you helping them then with the hands-on part? The first thing, the very first thing, is um, a process that I call body mapping or teching. I, um, when I have them take it home, I say, you're teching it out. Okay. And so what we do with, with body mapping is um, I go over using massage techniques and also erotic techniques, and we go over the entire body, like every single millimeter, as well as internally, and do a variety of different touches so that she can gauge what she actually likes and then express that what she likes. Because if you think about it, like if you imagine being touched, and you know, there's something that you really like, do you say something? Mm. Right. Or do you just hope that he'll keep doing more of it? If you don't like something, do you say something or do you wait for it to be over and endure touch? Right, mm -hmm. there's a lot of enduring. So if you imagine enduring, you're like waiting and waiting. Okay, I hope he's gonna do something else because this right. sucks. And then you start thinking about other things. Instead, you can direct it as long as you have the, the language for it. And when you want more of something, like eventually you get into a nice um, integration with your partner where, you know, he's in tune with your breathing. Mm -hmm. So he can tell by your breath or by Whether your goosebumps or by something right. that you're responding well. Right. But before that, you have to actually tech verbalize. it out and verbalize it. And how your body responds when you're not aroused is also different from when you're aroused. So I'll advocate spending long periods of time on a regular basis teching out each other's bodies. And with the teching for women, um, you know, moving over a quarter of a centimeter can make a huge difference. Right. Huge difference. It, it can mean the difference between actually having an orgasmic release or not. So you also might assist them in going through this so they can yeah. physically experience what you're talking about rather than you just you know, I can talk and talk and talk, talk and talk, yeah. but I c they won't get it until they actually feel it. And once they've felt it, there's this aha, oh. That's what you're talking oh, about. okay. I can take this and I can replicate it. Right. And build on it. Right. So the hands-on process is super important. And when there are blockages, um, yeah. we store emotions in our bodies. Absolutely. So. Sometimes you're not even aware that you're holding something until you get there and an emotion comes up. Mm -hmm. Now in, I'm gonna call it real life sex, an emotion comes up, but it's not a convenient emotion mm -hmm. to have while you're having sex. Mm -hmm. So you ignore it and push it away and it remains there in your body. When you're in a bodywork session that is designed specifically for your healing, then when that emotion comes up, then you can process it and deal with it. And if it's not useful, you know, remove it. Mm -hmm. Right, so I, I, that was my next thing, is I'm guessing that when you're helping women and you're doing any sort of hands-on work with them, my guess is you hit a lot of emotions. Lots of emotions, yeah. Right, that they might not even be aware, like what's going on, because it's stored in, and until they're actually touched, it's sort of like you, you know, you open the, the floodgate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that will be kind of ongoing, because we're always processing. Right. So. You know, you could release an emotion and then, you know, you have an experience. Maybe, maybe that's where you store your emotions. Right. So throughout your sexual practice in your life, when things come up, you'll be like, oh, okay. And you can release it easily. But again, you've got to learn how to do it. Right. So it's taking sexual responsibility and then doing the work 
making it a sexual practice to figure out what is it that pleasures me, what do I want, what doesn't work for me, mm -hmm. so that they can then communicate that to their partner, both in the moment and otherwise. They're still the otherwise communication is just as important as in the moment communication. Right. Having actual conversations that are sort of you know like you're teching out a project is really really important so when you have something sometimes it's difficult to say in the moment what's actually going on or you're trying like say you're trying out a new position or trying out a, a new role play or whatever mm -hmm. you know you go through it and you do your best to make it really good and then you have discussions about it what worked for you what didn't work for you what would you like more of um, oh I you know I hadn't felt that kind of touch before and I would love to feel more of it so let's play with that Right. And, and then it, that's where you plan, like you do your sexual planning. Wow. And sex does have to be planned. Yeah. Like, in, you know, it doesn't magically happen. There's a myth of spontaneity, and it is a myth. Right. Thank you so much for shedding light on these myths. Thank you so much for shedding light on the idea that we need to take sexual responsibility and that we can create and manifest a great sex life if we're willing to do the work. Um, our viewers can get in touch with you. Your website, remind me again, is? It is www.thesensualist, that's all one word, right. thesensualist.org. Great, great. Thank you so much for coming Thanks in. Thanks for having me. And thank you for watching, and we hope we've given you some ideas on how you too can manifest a great sex life.